and let us all that we can to build a better future. Our politicians are being called out. A lot of them should, as they should. And I think it's important uh, for everyone who is a progressive, independent, libertarian, Republican, conservative, liberal, to use their right, their First Amendment, while we still have it, uh, to call out our politicians. See, they're public servants. And with this conflict that's happening in Gaza, for some reason, ever since after October 7th, I felt this huge cloud over all of us, this absolute bleak, grim, dark feeling. And it's how it's been impacting our political landscape. And it's making it very clear that even the Biden-Harris administration that was promoted as the administration that was going to return to Seoul back to America, it's not doing that. And after October 7th, with the bombings in Gaza, the death toll is like, what, now at 11,000? Hey, I, I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, folks. But that number is going to keep on rising until maybe we have politicians who call for a ceasefire. When Bernie Sanders was confronted, nothing but silence. Fetterman, don't expect anything from him. Elizabeth Warren, nope. Joe Biden, does he even know where he's at anymore? Right now, after yesterday's show, uh, when I was uh, talking about Anthony Blinken, Jesus, man, that guy's probably crying into his beer. Is what it is. And there, yes, to be fair, there is a handful of House representatives. There's only a small handful that are actually calling for a ceasefire, including one Republican. I know. Wow. Incredible. Goodness gracious. But Ro Khanna got called out. Now, I'm going to play this video in its full entirety. I will not interrupt. I will give my thoughts and analysis after it's being played. But I, I love to see it. And so do you when these politicians get called out as they should. So let's go ahead and pull up this video. For all of us to see firsthand. This is from a constituent. I've been really kind to you. And I'm a Jewish American. And even though I'm Jewish, my white skin protects me in this country. So I'm going to lay it out to you. You're being a mealy-mouthed politician to take it, talking out both sides of your mouth. Israel has lost the right to defend itself in this case. This did not begin October 7th. As you probably know, apartheid has existed since Israel has existed in 1948. Like the United States of America, Israel is a white settler colonialist state and the Palestinians deserve a right to return to their homeland. You talk about the majority of your constituents, you're not listening to the majority of your constituents. You are listening to big tech, to the war machine in Silicon Valley, and to maybe some people who have time before this whole crisis began to call your office and have your ear. I know how politics works. Obviously, you are not going to unwound your heart for us. So we're just going to say this. We can't run someone against you at this time because that's closed in November. But your seat in 2026 is not yours. It's ours. And right now it's ours too. Your presidential ambitions are done. Your Senate ambitions are done. If you do not call for a ceasefire now, which is the leadership we need, you will not hold public office again in your next election. So thank you for your time. And thank you for showing to us who you actually are in your non-action. And I'll say one last thing. If you actually wanted to call for the bombings, put forward a resolution. Do it tomorrow. If you actually want something besides the ceasefire, put your actions into words and write a resolution so the rest of your colleagues that you're talking about will sign on, sign on to an end to the bombing. Thank you, Kareem. Thank you, Jessica. Now, that was what you call a gut check, a severe gut check. Um. I will say one uh, positive thing about Ro Khanna in comparison to some of his other Democratic colleagues. And again, this is this is this is just a huge stretch. So bear with me. At least he sat through it. And, you know, I mean, uh, he, he's even been on the Jimmy Dore show a few times. And uh, I know Sabby Sabs gave him a firm smack in, across the face in regards to hitting him with facts and information. But, uh, you know, he, he'll he'll sit through it with that look on his face. But OK. But, uh, yeah, this this should be uh, as a, a severe wake up call for a lot of these politicians who, mind you, by the way, don't care about us. OK, but we have the power as citizens and. I'm not asking you guys and gals to do it now, you hip cool cats. No, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you this. Take your time. But you, each of you are going to have to maybe take that social responsibility or help build an infrastructure necessary to make your state a citizen ballot initiative state 
so we can call for the abolition of all political parties, getting money out of politics, and so much more. It's going to be an arduous task because we can't rely on electoral politics. I get it. I understand it's something we're all too used to, electoral politics, but the fight for a better future lies with us. And these politicians need to realize that they worked for us for too long. They sat comfortably in their ivory tower. We are better than this, and we deserve better representation than what is being presented before us. And thank you, everyone. Thank you all for being here. Uh, Congressman, thank you for your time. Thank you for listening to us. As you can see, we care deeply about this issue. We want the resolution. Uh, I would just say, I mean, I strongly disagree with the last person because I believe America is the greatest country in the world. I, 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 I love this country, and I don't. So what can I say about a guy who uh, pretty much got owned like that in front of an entire viewing audience, in front of everyone, especially for the whole interweb to see, the World Wide Web? Well, you know what time it is. I mean, come on. I, it would be wrong of me not to say. Oof. 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 I know that's wrong of me. I should not have done that. I need to be better. I have to be better for all of you. I should. But I do want to also uh, have a another video right here. I want to share another video with all of you. Apologies for that stutter. Uh, but here's uh, Representative Ro Khanna on Catlin Collins' show on CNN on why he hasn't called for a ceasefire yet. I hope you're sitting down. Here we go. Four hour pauses go far enough in your view? Is that what you were thinking of? It's a good first step, but no, it, more needs to be done. I mean, you need to get two million gallons of water in there. We need to get fuel into the hospitals. Uh, and while Hamas is using Palestinian civilians as human shields, I have said that they should not be bombing uh, civilian sites, civilian dense sites, hospitals. Israel should not. Israel, sh Israel should not. I mean, I, I don't think they're intentionally targeting civilians. But are they doing enough to not hit civilians, in your view? In my Did I hear that right? I think the people who have been in some recent refugee centers, hospitals, residential areas would beg to differ, sir. Just throwing it out there. In my view, they should have more operational patience. I mean, look, they have the right to self-defense. It was a brutal attack on October 7th. Any country has the right to get Hamas perpetrators. But when you have a hospital, when you have a school, when you have a refugee camp with many children, even when Hamas is there, even when Hamas is there intentionally, I think you try to get Hamas out, you get them into the tunnels, you track them. Look, it took us 10 years to get, get Osama bin Laden, but the loss of life there uh, is heartbreaking. And so I would say, do not uh, bomb civilian dense sites. Yeah, I mean, they struck an ambulance recently, Israel arguing that Hamas is using it to transport weapons and fighters. President Biden said today that he was frustrated that it's this is not happening soon enough, that he's been pushing President or Prime Minister Netanyahu for a three-day pause or more. Look, I, I don't want to remind President Biden, you know, about the most important title that he has, but you're the president of these United States. This may come as a shock to you, but you do have power. Uh, oh, wait, I guess people, you know, are around him who are holding his hand. My goodness, the look on Anthony Blinken's face after that press event. Priceless. A little bit off so topic here, but, you know, again, Biden, you're the president of the United States. USA. You have power to say enough. But I guess that's not the case. And this was a horrible way to pause. He has a lot of influence on what the prime minister does. He's kind of bear hugged him. He's been one of his biggest supporters since this war broke out. Do you think he could influence him to do more? He doesn't, doesn't. I mean, I think certain things, uh, they're just not listening. Uh, my sense is that he has asked for the humanitarian pause. He wants the pause to be longer. Uh, I think the United States government has had candid conversations about doing more to minimize civilian casualties. And the president is making progress. Uh, and I do think that uh, the White House has uh, really stepped up in talking about Palestinian lives. Hey, let's have democracy in the chat. Do you think Ro Khanna is giving a fair analysis in regards to what's happening? Type one for yes, Kit. You got to trust these politicians. Type two, man, what are you talking about, man? This, this is more political talk. This, this, this is what you call classic word salad. Uh, and making sure that they're protected. Your political director just resigned recently because you 
are not calling for a ceasefire. Uh, is there, would you ever call for a ceasefire? Do you ever see yourself doing that? I wouldn't rule it out. I mean, at some point, the war has to end. But the reason I didn't call for a ceasefire is that when you have the brutal murder of 1,400 civilians and people have committed that terrorist attack, if you just say, okay, let's have a ceasefire. Oh, oh, okay, look, look here. I'm, I'm, I'm going to quote Trump here, okay? I think what everyone is thinking here, and I'm just going to use the words of Donald Trump, I want people to stop dying. That's that's me. That's That's what I'm trying to say. Now, this is just my opinion. I do hope that someday there's peace in our time, but with the actions and the bombing in Gaza, 11,000 plus people and continue to grow dying. I mean, after a while, I mean, come on, it's call for a ceasefire. Hospitals being bombed, residential areas being bombed, refugee centers being bombed. All what it's doing is laying the foundation for the next conflict. You know, maybe Rokani should speak to Bassem Youssef again. I actually watched both those interviews again back to back while I was, uh, you know, doing some additional work. And I have to say, uh, Rokana, you, you, sh you should you should maybe talk to Bassem Youssef and, and hear his perspective because, you know, you're just saying, oh, OK, yes, 1,400 people died. This this is an absolute tragedy. And it is uh, 11,000 people dying and continuing is is a freaking nightmare. And we we the whole world is asking for a ceasefire. Stop, stop the bombing. Uh, enough people have died. Uh, the, 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 it's, when, when, when do we say stop? When it gets to 100,000? 200,000? Half a million? Because it seems like nobody in a position of power in D.C. has the courage to say stop. Then you're uh, basically saying there was no consequence to doing that. So I think there has to be more operational patience, precision, surgical operations, and getting the Hamas terrorists that uh, were accountable. And once we do that, I also think there needs to be a peace process with equality for Palestinian rights. What is your thinking on this, Ben? I mean, have you ever been close to calling for a ceasefire? Because this is really dividing your party, but especially progressives. It's dividing the, the country. I mean, look, there was a sit-in in my district office today. I've, I've never seen this kind of mobilization uh, since the Iraq war. I mean, this is, there are people out on the street and they're upset with what they're seeing on television. They're upset with what they saw with the uh, Israelis who were killed. They're upset with the hostages and they're upset with the Palestinian children who are being killed. It's an emotional issue for me. Then call for a ceasefire, Mr. Politician. Enough of this. Enough. Enough of hearing weak words and no action. Look, folks, let's be very clear here. People like Rokana like to throw out word salads. But that brave woman who in almost two minutes systematically had the courage to say what needed to be said to a politician, and that is, if you're not going to fight for us, we'll find somebody else. If you're not going to represent our values, we're going to find somebody else. And if you won't show an ounce of humanity by calling for a ceasefire, then yes, we will find somebody else. And this should apply to Democratic and Republican politicians across the board. I mean, they have six-figure salaries, wonderful social benefits. They get to have gold-plated health care. What about the rest of us? What, what about the people? Because it's a bigger issue. These politicians are not representing us. And I think it's long overdue that we implement our own citizen power and criticize these politicians and make them realize that if they're not going to respect us, we're not going to respect them either.